Praise the Lord on today. I am Pastor Brian Phillips, and we are Truth Ministries of Charlotte, North Carolina. And I just want to first and foremost thank God for this day that he has made. Uh, we will rejoice and praise his name for his mercy and his grace. Another day in the number. Thanking God for waking us up on today and giving him all the glory because him and him only is worthy of the glory and praise. And so as I get ready to go into this message on today, I want to first and foremost give an honor to God that is my Lord and Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. And I want to acknowledge God in a word of prayer as I go into my message for today. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I've come to glorify your name. And I pray that through your word, Lord, that someone's heart and spirit would be encouraged and touched. Father, as I prepare myself to decrease, I would ask you to increase. And that I would let you ask that your word would resonate on today with your people. And that you would receive all the glory. This I pray in Jesus' name. And so on this day, this message that I want to deliver to God's people. And... As I was praying about the word of God today, there was something that had came over me. And what had happened is I had actually had a vision of the first time that someone approached me. And this is when I was in the midst of living like a heathen. This is when I was, you know, living that life. I was in the world and, you know, I was doing my thing, you know, and um, I can recall even as a Muslim, I can recall that there was that one time when somebody approached me and they approached me with good intentions. I will say that. I believe that their intentions were good, but it was the delivery and what they actually said to me that had me on defense to the point where it was just like, see, this is why I don't deal with y'all now. This is why I don't mess with church folk. And it was actually um, a brother who went to the church that my mother went to um, many years ago that we went to when we were younger. And uh, I seen him in the street, and uh, I think I might have had a beer in my hand. I might have been smoking, you know, just living that life, doing what I do. And he approached me, and he said, hey, I remember you. You, you know, you Brenda's son, and you used to go to New Hope Baptist Church and et cetera. And I was like, yeah, that's me. You know, how you doing? How you and he proceeded to, um, I don't know what his intentions were, but I can remember that he had said some things to me that really offended me because at that time I did not have the mind of a person that was saved or any understanding of how I was supposed to be living. I was just living in sin and iniquity. And so most people, when they're living in that life, they're not going to really receive you if you come at them with a lot of spiritual things because they're not spiritual. And, and the reality of that is that we have to understand that in order to be a soul winner or to encourage people to hear the word of God, we must operate with wisdom. And a lot of people are lacking wisdom. They don't have wisdom. Now, one thing I can say is this. I am so grateful today that I can say that I am saved. That means that I don't live how I used to live no more. I don't do the things I used to do no more. I don't smoke. I don't lie. I don't curse. I don't drink. You know, I don't do these things no more. Thank you, God, for your son. And thank you for the blood of Jesus, which I was washed clean. I'm happy today. But what I do understand is this, that everything that I had to go through, everything that I did in my life, that it was that process, that was something that I had to go through in my life. And because I drank and smoked and lied and sold drugs, because I did those things, today I can stand before people saved because God has forgiven me for my sins. Because the Bible says that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. It says the old things are passed away. But it was because of those same exact things that I indulged in and the life that I live, it has made me the man that I am today. So on this day, I can say that I have understanding from the perspective of the world because I once lived in the world. 
And see, when you have perspective and understanding of the things that some of our younger brothers and sisters might be battling with, instead of you coming at them with a harsh word about what they need to do, how they need to get right, sometimes it's good to just say, hey, brother, how are you? How you been? How's your family? Anything I can do for you? You need help with anything. Because a lot of times religious folks have good intentions, but they have no wisdom. And see, and I have to say today that I believe in my heart that God had to make sure that in order for him to call me to carry out what I need to carry out in ministry, that he had to make sure that I was well balanced so that when it's time for me to stand before other brothers and sisters who are battling with alcoholism, battling with lesbianism or homosexuality, those who are battling with drug addiction, those who are battling with lust spirits, that I would have more understanding, because guess what? I battle with all of that other than the homosexuality thing. I ain't never battled with that. I'm just keeping it real. I ain't never had those thoughts. I ain't never wanted to be with another man or nothing like that. I thank God for that. But I do understand that there are people that are fighting temptation and dealing with these things every day. And if we don't have enough wisdom to understand, sometimes people are hurting. People are going through trials. There are some things that people today are suffering with right now that you could not even imagine. And sometimes you may be that one person that they need just to listen or to give a kind word. And so on today... I really want to give this to y'all because the Bible says in Proverbs 15 and 1, it says that a soft answer, it turn away of wrath. But it says grievous words stir up anger. And so I recall, I, I'm living by that scripture because I can recall that time when that brother came to me and instead of him having a kind word to say with me, say to me, he had a bunch of things that he was saying, basically, oh, you know you shouldn't be drinking, and what you doing? You lo you grew up in the church. You know better than that. And I, pro I proceeded to say, hey, bro, get up out my face. And I actually did not use those kind words. It was more like get out of my blank face. Because you don't operate. See, that's not wisdom. A person with wisdom would understand, if you see me standing on the corner and you know I got a beard, you know I'm smoking a blunt. It's obvious that you must be able to realize that I'm living in sin. But you also must realize if you are a religious person and you're supposed to have knowledge and understanding of God, then you have to have enough wisdom to understand that I don't, I don't possess that knowledge. So instead of you coming at me all harsh, why not come at me with a kind word? Because I have done this before. Because people don't have any wisdom. They're not operating with wisdom. So what I want to do today is I want to share something with you. And this is for my religious folks. Because many of you have good intentions. That's why I'm not here to kick anybody down. I'm not here to condemn anybody. But I'm here to expose what's real. And what's real is that we have a lot of people that are religious who have no wisdom and this is why people are not getting saved. This is why people are running full speed from the, the church man and sister. As soon as they see him, they turn around and go the other way because they already know that what's getting ready to come out of your mouth is nothing positive. It's just something to remind them about how they, how they already doing wrong. So for my religious folks today, this is for you. And this is something I want you to hear because it's real. And you don't even have to like me for it, because I don't care. But the Bible says, well, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. I'm not going to give you the scripture yet. I'm going to give you the statement that was put on my spirit to share with you. Here's what it is. Hear this. You cannot be scared into salvation. Stop it. Stop trying to scare people off with all these dreams and visions that God is showing you about how God is getting ready to do this and do that to them and their family. You cannot scare a man or a woman into salvation. You can't scare them. When people hear that kind of stuff, they get away from you as fast as possible. You can't scare a man into living holy and righteously. That's not God's word. 
The fear of God must be embedded into a person through the word of God. Let's get this clear. This is where no wisdom comes in. Scare tactics from man anger and push people away. It's the truth. Because them same scare tactics that people tried on me, it made me say, see, that's why I don't deal with church folks. That's why I won't go into the church. But to this day, I can say that I'm saved. And guess what? Man ain't got nothing to do with my salvation. I got saved because I started to hear the word of God. See, the problem is we have given up. Religious folks have given up on the word of God. And you have attempted to play God by trying to get people to get saved the way you think they should get saved instead of just sticking to the word. You don't believe in the word no more. You don't believe that the word is enough. You believe you got to scare people. You got to tell them all these dreams and visions instead of just being kind to them. How how about being kind to a brother and sister to the point where they can feel like they're comfortable with you. And then you can ask them to come on into the church and, and enjoy yourself in fellowship. And guess what? The word of God can be preached. And when the word of God is preached, let me let you hear what the Bible says. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, for the word of God is quick. It says, and powerful. It says, and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It also says, and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's word is enough. It's enough. Jesus told the apostles, y'all getting ready to go out. Y'all getting ready to carry my word. You know what he told them? John 17 and 17, sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is the truth. Man, we don't need your tactics. We don't need your scare tactics. Sanctify them through the truth. The word of God is truth. The word of God compels. It convicts. But what happened to love? What happened to compassion? What happened to a kind word, which the Bible says it does turn away wrath? Why? Because here's the thing. Ecclesiastes 10 and 12 says this. The words of a wise man's mouth are grieving, are gracious. Receive that. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious words. It says, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. Paul said in Ephesians 4 and 29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouths, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto those who hear it. We failing. And while we as religious folks are failing, souls are dying. Have we forgotten? Let's just be all the way real. The word of God makes it clear to us that there are those who are chosen as the very elect. There are those who are predestined to inherit the kingdom of heaven, and there's those that aren't. But Paul wrote to Timothy and told him, he said, but this is what you do, Timothy. Preach the word. He said, and you preach it in season, you preach it out of season. He said, you rebuke, reprove, and exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. He goes on to tell him that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. He said that it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It's God's word. Hallelujah. Proverbs 27. I'm sorry, Proverbs 17, and I'm going to start from the 27th verse, and I'm going to read two verses of the scripture. I want you to hear this today. Because none of us understand as religious folks how much blood you got on your hands because of the fact that you are chasing people away with your own theories and ideologies of the things that you are saying to people that you think is going to work to make them get right with God instead of just simply preaching the word. See, the trick for the church, and it's not a trick, but why we don't have any wisdom is because we have not yet understood this small little thing. Jesus teaches us to be kind, loving to our neighbor, 
to one another. Why? Because the church is supposed to be the place where the foundation is at. That foundation is the word of God. If you can get them in the church, you can preach a word. The preacher can give forth a word from God. And that word, if you're led by the spirit of God, it can pluck the heart. People can get right. People will get stirred up. People will get right through the word of God. And then why man can't wait to take credit, as soon as somebody gets saved, the glory belongs to God. Because it was the word of God that got him saved. He confessed his sins. He repented of his sins. He got right with God, not because you were so clever, but because it was God's word. That's why when people say, oh, Pastor Phillips, you ain't got no anointing. I don't need no anointing. I got God's word. I'm good. You can have the gimmicks. I don't need gimmicks. I don't want gimmicks. The truth is I'm more anointed than most of you preachers because I preach the truth. And so while y'all like to go around it and make it sound good and look good and add the harmonics and you're passing out sweating like a slave, with no substance behind nothing you're saying. I give people the word. It's good enough. I believe in God's word. I believe that God's word is everything. I believe that it's nobody on this planet that is not predestined to hear God's word that won't receive it and give their life to Christ as God has already predestined for them to do. The problem is the word is not going out. Tactics are going out. Man's theories are going out. The word of God is not being heard by people, and people ain't getting right. That's why when you walk up to somebody, they look at you and say, you better not say, if you say the wrong thing to me, you're going to get it today. You're going to get it today, because they know you ain't got no wisdom. But I'd rather a brother that I know get drunk, I know get high, I know that deal of fornication, I know that lie and steal, but every time he see me, he can't wait to say, hey, Pastor Phyllis, what's going on, man? It's good to see you. So I can say, hey, brother, what's going on? I ain't seen you in a while. Hey, man, you need to come on into the church and hear a word. Most of them tell you, oh, man, I'm not coming to nobody's church. I don't do church folks. I tell them from the beginning, I ain't no church folk. I ain't no religious person. I am a pastor who preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was just as wicked as you are. I have no place to judge you. Come on in here and hear the word. I, t I can tell you this. It was the word of God that set me free. If God did it for me, he can do it for you, bro. Whether you like it or not, wisdom is wisdom. Some of us ain't got none. A lot of you are operating out of place. You don't know your place. Because you do it your way and not the way the Bible says do it. The Bible says in Colossians 4 and 5, it says, walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Hallelujah. There it is. Walk in wisdom towards those that are without. If you're walking to somebody and you know they wicked, you got to use wisdom when you approach that brother or that sister. This is the Bible. This is what the Bible tells us to do. It says, redeem in the time. Let your speech be always with grace. Seasoned with salt that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Even if you know they've been wicked their whole life. Every time they came in church, they act like they was going to do right, and they ain't do right. They still living in sin. I've known them since they was a baby. They've been wicked since they was little. you still supposed to have words that are seasoned with salt. You're still supposed to approach them with grace and with love. You ain't supposed to go up to them and say, you still ain't saved? Your mama been praying for you on her knees, crying over you? You're going to end up in hell. That's where you're going. You know what they'll tell you? Hey, guess what? You go to hell. Because they not spiritual. Because you ain't got no wisdom. Ooh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Wow. I, I, I'm... <laughs> And you know what? And I did because I love God's word. That's why I know God's word is enough. He that keepeth his mouth. This is Proverbs 13 and 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. 
Sometimes it's better just to be quiet. You don't know. There's somebody out there that may be looking at you and they may need you. How many people have chased away people who came to you and they needed somebody they, they needed to talk to, that they needed to confide in, and they just needed a kind word, somebody to listen, and not to coddle them. I'm not saying that you coddle people and tell people that it's okay for them to live and sin and to indulge in wickedness. That's not what I'm saying because some of you religious folks or, or go ahead and say, oh, yeah, Pastor Phillips, that's his problem. He's trying to coddle people. He's trying to tell people it's okay to sin. No, that's not what I'm doing at all. But what I'm saying is that the word of God teaches us to give a kind word, to let our words be seasoned with salt, and that we are not to proceed out of our mouths with things that are not gracious. So whether you believe in your mind that you need to be harsh and nasty towards people because they just ain't getting it, that's your theory. That's not what the Bible teaches. And if you won't go by what God's word say, then you're going by your own ideologies. That's why we fell in. We fell in because we're going by our own ideologies and we're not giving people the word. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27 and 28. He that have knowledge spare of his words. It says... And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible goes on to say, even a fool, even a fool, when he holdeth his peace is counted wise. It says, and he that shut of his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Sometimes it's better just to shut up. Be quiet. When somebody tell you all their troubles and their problems, sometimes it's better just to say, well, you know what, brother? Or you know what, sister? I'm going to be in prayer for you. It's going to be all right. Guess what? Because if you, see, I'm, I'm, I'm giving y'all, this for the religious folks, I'm giving you, I'm giving you some, some wisdom. Because guess what? Wisdom don't come with just age. Most older folks think they know it all because they older. And then you look down on those who are younger as to say that we have no wisdom. So while you think I don't have no wisdom, I have something that most older folks are lacking. I have balance. I understand the perspective of things from a spiritual perspective because now through the grace of God, I am spiritual. But I also have the understanding of things that are carnal and of the world because I was once of the world. So I have understanding. I'm kind. I have mercy for a brother that might be dealing with lust. Guess what? I used to deal in lust. I have mercy for somebody that may drink or smoke and commit adultery and fornication because I did those things. But I am also the living and walking example to that brother that, guess what? I'm a new man in Christ. So can you be. I ain't nobody special. And for the record, the Bible says that God has no respect of person. He don't care who you are, where you come from, what you did, what religion you are. He don't care what race you, he created you to be. The reality of it is he has no respect of person. Come unto me. Come. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you, then he can cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And he didn't just say, all my Mexican brothers, come on. All my white brothers, come on. If you're Puerto Rican, you done. No, that's not the gospel. God has no respect of person. This is why we failing. We are failing. The church is failing. Because we have implemented our own theory to what God's word say. Instead of just sticking to the script. God's word is the script. It's perfect. God's word is perfect. It's up to you to be led through the spirit of God to learn how to give it to the people. You're supposed to be led by the spirit. Most preachers don't even got the Holy Ghost. That's why people don't never get right with God. It ain't because they stubborn. It ain't because they don't never want to live right. It's because you don't preach the gospel. It's got to change. 
It's got to change. How many people are being ran out of the church every day because of religious folks with their own theories and ideologies? With no compassion, with no love, with no kind words for a brother or a sister that might be battling with some things. It ain't my place to judge you. We all got to stand before God. We all got to give an account, including myself. Who am I to say that you can't be what God may have for you to be? Who am I? It's not my place. My place is to preach the word, to give you the truth. You know what you are? The Bible says this in Proverbs 11 and 9. This is what you are. Religious folks, this is you. It says a hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. I'll say that again. It says a hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor's. To all of you that think that you got to remind every brother and sister that you come in contact with how wicked they are, how they still ain't living right, how they still ain't got right, how the Lord showed you they was going to do this to them and do that to them, and then they're going to come for their families and their kids. The Bible says a hypocrite with his mouth destroy of his neighbor. Why you think you're doing a good thing, you are destroying and tearing down and discouraging people. And the first thing they say is, oh, oh, thank you, brother and sister, for, for that. And when they turn around and walk away from you, they say, I make sure I will never talk to that person again. And if I see him anywhere, I won't go near him. And I'm definitely not going in that church because that's where they go. Just that easy. Why? Because you allow corrupt communications to proceed out of your mouth. And it was not love. It was not kindness. It was not meekness. The things that the Bible teaches. But then you will look at a preacher like myself who's giving you the word of God. I'm not giving you my own theory. This ain't what I think. I'm giving you the scripture. And you'll look at me and call me weak. So I would say this, just for the record, ain't nothing weak about Pastor Brian Phillips of Truth Ministries in Charlotte. I've never coddled people. I've never lied to them. I've never told them it was okay to live in sin and adultery and fornication. But what I won't do is I won't continue to kick a brother or a sister when they already down. I'm not going to kick them. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reach out my hand and I'm going to lift them back up. And I'm going to say, guess what? You didn't fail and you've been failing and falling and falling, but guess what? Today can be the day you don't got to fall no more. And whether y'all like it or not, you know what that's called? Wisdom. The adulterous woman was escorted to Jesus. Why? Because she was supposed to be stoned to death before, because of what she did. They couldn't wait. They took her. They was waiting like, Jesus, give us the word so we can throw these boulders. We finna kill her. You know what Jesus told that woman? He said, now you go. And he said, and don't sin no more. Period. That's the scripture. He didn't say, next time you sin, God gonna come and he gonna strike you down. He didn't say, that I died for you, and I'm here on earth right now to bring my word, and you are disobedient. If I find out you indulge in adultery again, I'm going to come get you. No. He said, now go. Oh, but for the record, he said go, but he told her. He said, now sin no more. If she had choose to indulge in sin again, then she's going to have to give an account for that sin. But ultimately, it was the Messiah himself. The Messiah himself, who showed grace, who showed mercy. Because according to the law, she was supposed to be stoned to death. But the reality is, I would not give these hypocrites the time of day because each and every one of y'all are guilty of sin as well. But y'all brought her to be persecuted for it. By the time he looked up, they was gone. Hypocrites. What does it say? A hypocrite with his mouth. <laughs> A hypocrite with his mouth, destroy of his neighbor. 
but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> you can be mad at me all you want. That's the word. And a lot of you are the hypocrites. You're the ones who speak negative to everybody you come in contact with that you know ain't right. And then you even attempt to rebuke those who are living righteously by telling them, according to your theory, they not. Not many people told me that I ain't living right for whatever their reasons are. I know where I stand with God. I know what I do every day. I know I fear God. I know I love Jesus. Hypocrites, that's what they are. They love to point out everything that's wrong about everybody else, and they never see no fault in nothing they do. Never. Boy, let's get into this. Let's go, let's go into the word some more. I'm going to bring this thing home, and I'm going to the book of James in the third chapter. The book of James in the third chapter, and I'm going to start reading from the 13th verse. This is God's words. Like I said, I don't preach theory. I ain't deep enough for all that. I'm not. We got some deep folks out here. I ain't that deep. I got God's word. That's all I'm working with. <laughs> and I'm content in that because that's all I need. That's all I need. Hallelujah. James chapter 3, starting at the 13th verse. If you got your Bibles, read. If you don't, rewind the recording and get these scriptures and read them in your own time. The Bible says in verse 13 of chapter of James, the third chapter, it says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? This is James asking, Who? Who's the wise man? Who got all the sense? The Bible says, Let him show out of a good conversation. His works with meekness of wisdom. With meekness of wisdom. A kind, a man that possesses wisdom is kind. He's merciful. He's a few words. But when he speaks, it's gracious. Is that not the scripture? So all of y'all that love to rebuke and remind everybody about how wicked they are, that's not the scripture. I've been looking for that one. I've been looking for the Bible. I'm looking for the scripture. If you know it, send it to me. That says every time you come to somebody that you know is living in sin, that you're supposed to rebuke them and tear them down and remind them that they're living in sin and then tell them they better hurry up and get right. Send it to me. I'm looking. Hypocrites. And you wicked. The Bible speaks about revilers. You know what a reviler is? The Bible says that revilers should not inherit the kingdom of heaven. A reviler is people that get together and talk about other people negatively. That is a reviler. Do you know how many church folks are operating in a state of, of a reviler every day? But they say because they save, they think they get a pass. The problem is, most of you church folks been saved for 30 years. You never even went and found out what a reviler is. You don't even know. That's why so much damage being done in the church because people are operating outside of God's word and a lot of times they don't even realize and know that they are. That's why preachers got to preach and you got to teach. Preachers got to teach what a reviler is. People need to know what sedition is. They need to know what variance is. They need to know these things. People don't know. When they read the scriptures, they don't have comprehension of what these words mean. Why? Because I didn't. I had to look them up. I had to study. I had to find out. How will I know if I don't, if I don't study? That's why the Bible says what? Study to show thyself approved. To who? Unto God. Not to man. Most of y'all study just to get on a level to where you can get approval from man to say, oh, yeah, he good enough. He good enough. You've been studying with us long enough. You good. You good. We accept you. But the Bible tells us that we should study to show ourselves approved unto God. 
that a workman needeth not to be ashamed that you are rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. Verse 14 says, but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, wow. The Bible says, glory not and lie not against the truth. Many of you are bitter. Many of you have strife. You're mad at people because people did things to you in the past, hurt you, have not forgiven them. And every chance you get, you talk about them. You talk about their families. You talk about their children because you're still bitter. You still have malice in your heart. You got to check these things. Why would you speak negative against somebody if, if that did you wrong if you've already forgiven them? If you forgave somebody truly from your heart, you're not going to talk negative against them because you already didn't forgave that person. Some of y'all are still hurt, holding on to things that people have done in the past that hurt you, and every chance you get, you attack them. That's not God. That's malice. That's strife. That's not God. God ain't tell you to attack that brother or sister. You still mad at them because 10 years ago they did something you ain't like and you still holding on to that. You have not forgiven them. You better get your spirit right with God. Verse 15 says, This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Many of you religious persons and peoples are operating within earthly emotions and you are too arrogant and prideful and puffed up to even acknowledge and recognize you doing it. And according to Proverbs 6, what does God hate? He hates arrogance. He hates pride. I know a lot of religious folks won't accept nothing from nobody unless it's what they want to hear. You can't tell them nothing. You can open up the Bible and say, well, wait a minute. You just said, I heard you say that, but the Bible say this, and they will rebuke you like something wrong with you. Why? Because they puffed up. They think they better. But you're not better. The Bible says in verse 16, for where uh, envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. That's why so much confusion going on in the churches. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that's the word of God. It says, this, windeth, this wisdom descendeth not from above. It is earthly, sensual. It is devilish. But it says, for where envy and strife, which a lot of you have, a lot of you have envy in your hearts, you have strife in your heart, you will teach people to hate others where in the bible does it teach the body which is one body but many members to hate one another as a man of god i would never tell a soul not to go near another soul because they ain't no good and we are supposed to believe be believers of the same gospel what's wrong with people you know why because that's not God. Because for where envy and strife is, there is confusion. And guess what? Confusion is never of God because God is not the author of confusion. He has no part in it. What it is is most of y'all putting God's name on confusion and saying that's God. No, that ain't God. That's you. It's you. God don't have nothing to do with confusion. Anything that's confusing is man. Man did that. Y'all let it happen. Y'all caused it to happen. And then try to say it's God. God ain't no author of confusion. What God y'all serving? I don't know that God. Thank you, Jesus, I don't know that God. Many of you are operating in a state of idolatry and you don't even realize that you're worshiping other things and you're calling it God. But you're worshiping yourselves. That's not God. You got people today that will disregard and ignore the scripture to follow after man or woman. Wow. So if I give you the word and I say the Bible say this, but that brother said that you're supposed to do it that way because you fear him, 
You'll follow after his way and disregard God's word. Boy, we are living in a time. We are living in a time. Verse 17 says, but the wisdom that is from above, it says, is first pure. <laughs> the wisdom from above is pure. It says, then it's peaceable. Hallelujah. It goes on to say it's gentle. And easy to be entreated. Full of mercy. This is the word. Full of mercy. And good fruits. Without partiality. Without partiality. That means that you don't pick and choose who you deal with. You don't treat certain people better than you treat other people. There is no partiality. There is none. Why? Because once again, God has no respect of person. This is the scripture. I'll stand on this any day before I follow some man in, into iniquity, because that's what it is. It's iniquity. And the first time I seen it with my own eyes, I said, oh, no. I say it every time I get a chance. The worst thing anybody could have ever did to me was give me a Bible. Because I don't do a lot really well, but I can read. And I'm pretty decent in comprehension. And through the grace of God, through the Holy Spirit, he gives me revelation, understanding, and interpretation of his word. I don't need man for nothing. That's why they hate me. They hate me because I'm not afraid to stand on my own. I don't need you to get the glory. I can pray fast and seek God for myself. I got a personal relationship with Jesus. And I don't need men to walk me through it. Because I can read. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, I can read. It's right there. It's right there. I can read for myself. I don't need nobody to read for me. I don't need nobody to interpret nothing for me. I I'm good. I'm good. And what I do need, I can go to God himself and ask him to reveal it to me, and he's going to take good care of me because he said he would never leave nor forsake the righteous. And as long as I keep living right and doing the right thing according to his word and not what man say, I'm going to be all right. And I encourage everybody listening to this today, if you do it that way, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And if you woke up this morning, guess what? It ain't too late. It's not too late. Don't let him lie to you. Tell it's too late. The Lord showed me you're going to hell, liar. Man's thoughts ain't like God's thoughts, and his ways ain't like your ways. Ain't never seen so many people go to hell. Nobody go to heaven no more. Everybody going to hell now. From the religious folks, you going, you going, you going. Where's the mercy and grace that God speaks about in his word? Do we actually know who's predestined? Did God not say that his thoughts ain't like our thoughts? If Jesus didn't know when his father was going to send him back, what makes y'all think y'all know? Jesus didn't even know. He didn't even know. He told his apostles that. Y'all weren't, they asking, when are you going to return? You leaving? Y'all asking the wrong questions. My father in heaven, that's him. I came to give life and life more abundantly. I came to bring forth the gospel. And you, my apostles, y'all going to carry it because John 17 and 17, you're going to sanctify them through what? Thy truth, which is what? Thy word. Sanctify them, clean them up, give it to them. Even Jesus, he let them know. He went, he told them, he said, he told the Pharisees, he told the Sadducees, guess what, they don't accept it, brush off your feet, keep moving. That's it. Don't waste my breath trying to scare somebody into salvation. Listen, either you're going to hell or you're not. That's for God to know. 
He told me to preach the word. So what you can't do is when you stand before God, say, oh, um, Lord, I didn't know. Oh, you knew because my servant told you. <laughs> do I want to see anybody's soul be lost for eternity? Absolutely not. That's why I preach it the way I do. But ultimately, salvation is not in my hands. Salvation is in God's word. Either you receive it, do what the word of God tell you to do, or you don't. At the end of the day, who am I? I'm a, just a messenger. I'm just delivering a message. That's it. It's up to you to take heed to God's word and follow it into righteousness. That's you. If you don't want to, but you won't say, you can't say you didn't know what's going to happen to you if you don't. All I can do is give you God's word. That's why I said I will never speak death over anybody's life. I would never do that because ultimately I don't know what God's plan is for people's lives. So why would I speak death over another man or another sister's life when I don't know what God has predestined for them? Because that's not for me to know. I was given a simple instruction from God from the time I was called to ministry, which was just to preach his word. That was it. And I was trying to figure out why me, I ain't, I, me, I'm not no preacher, I'm going to preach somebody word. I'll never forget somebody, but the first time God started dealing with, I woke up, I didn't even want to go back to sleep. I'm like, God is tripping. That's what I was thinking. Preacher? Me? Preaching somebody's gospel? I'm having dreams, I'm in people's pulpits, and I'm preaching, and I wake up like, what in the world? I don't want to preach. I want to smoke. I get up and roll up like, man, I don't know what's going on, but I can't do this. <laughs> God going to leave me alone. But look at me now. Who would have knew? <laughs> but I do thank God for what? I thank God for, I thank God for my mother-in-law. I thank God for my wife. I thank God for the church folks that were praying for me. I thank God for those folks. I, pray, I thank God for my wife who, when I was high and down in the living room smoking and, and having a good time and doing what I was doing, and she was upstairs anointing my shoes, and when I was asleep at night, she would anoint my head and rub my head. I thank God for that. But ultimately, I thank God for his mercy and his grace because it was his call. He chose me. And only he could have chosen me. No man had no say so on what God does. No man. And we need to stop acting like we do. Because religious folks act like they got to say so. They act like they can get on the phone and call Jesus and say, Hey, Lord, this one right here, get rid of this one. Wow. What kind of arrogance is that? Never forget this. Any man think of himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. You people are exactly what the scripture says. Proverbs 11 and 9. I love it. It says, a hypocrite with his mouth destroy of his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge. Knowledge comes from what? The word of God. And I know that ain't deep. You ain't got to be a scholar to get that. You ain't got to go to nobody biblical school to get that. You ain't got to go to nobody seminar to get that. It's simple. It's simple. Hypocrites are destroying the church. Hypocrites are chasing people away. Hypocrites got blood on their hands. But it's not just the religious folks. A lot of you people out there, don't, don't be a hypocrite. A lot of people love to say how they know God. They know the word. They know this and know that. But they are not making a conscious effort whatsoever to get right with God. I will tell you this. No man knows the day nor the hour in which Jesus Christ will return. I'll give you that. Don't keep playing with salvation. If you got an opportunity to have it, 
through the word of God, go get it. Don't play. Time ain't promised. Time ain't promised. And guess what? It's a new disease that God has brought upon the earth. Why? Because man still has not repented. Everybody was sitting back waiting. I can't wait to get back to the bar. I can't wait to get back to the club. Now, everything's getting better. They're giving us needles now with vaccinations. Now, guess what? The Delta variant. Y'all think God is playing? God's word don't change. Since the beginning, thousands of years ago, through disobedience, it was disease. It was pestilence. It was famine. It was drought. Then we repented. God forgave through mercy and grace. This world has not repented for nothing. We just getting wickeder and wickeder every day. Every day we legalize something else God hates. We have no conscience, no remorse. What makes you think that God is going to heal this land and we have not yet repented? Same thing happened to the Israelites in 2 Chronicles. That's, one, that's a very familiar scripture, but it's real. If my people, which were called by my name, would just humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways. It says, then I'm going to hear from heaven. Then I'm going to forgive sin. It says, and then I will heal the land. Mm. Get ready for Delta. It's coming. It's here. Numbers going up every day. And until we repent, until we turn from wickedness, until we get right with God, you're going to continue to see death. You're going to continue to see suffering. Millions of people have died from the coronavirus. Every day I'm grieved in my spirit because out of those millions of people, I don't know how many people died in a state of sin. I don't know how many people died who knew the truth about the gospel but refused and rejected the word every chance they got and then died in sin and their souls were lost for eternity. How many of those souls out of the millions of people that died went to hell? Because I can promise you this, all those millions of people, everybody in here can get one of We ain't got no time to play. Don't play with God. That's the problem. We playing with God. We playing. That's why I thank God to this day. When he came for me, when he did, I thank God that I came when he told me to come. Because I don't know where I'd be right now if it had not been for his mercy and grace. I could be locked up in somebody's cage right now, away from my wife, away from my children, when I'm not walking in what God had me to do, being chastised. But never forget, yes, God does chastise those he loves. Many of y'all getting whooped right now every day. Whooped! Because you just keep on rejecting God. And he whooping you and whooping you and whooping you. You got lashes everywhere. But you woke up today. You got another chance today. You can repent today. You can ask God to forgive you today. It ain't too late for you. You woke up this morning. Let's stop playing. And so as I close, I, I thank God for the opportunity. I thank God for the opportunity to preach his word in these last and evil days. I thank God for the opportunity to tell the truth, uncensored and never wavering from it. And I pray that someone will take heed today. Take heed to God's word. But for the religious, those who proclaim to know Jesus, remember, I'll close with the same statement I started with. You cannot scare people into salvation. The fear of God must be embedded into a person through the word of God. Scare tactics from man, anger, and push people away. And I'll close with this. The fear of the Lord 
is the beginning of knowledge. But never forget, to all my people watching and to all of those that are out here, and again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's Proverbs 1 and 7. But it says, fools, they despise wisdom and instruction. They despise it. If you're one of those people that are continuing to reject God's word, you don't want to do it the way God say do it. You want to do it the way you want to do it. Guess what? That's your choice. God gave us free will. If God wanted everybody saved, we would not have free will. We would just all be saved. If God wanted us lost, we would not have a choice to be saved. We'd all be lost. It's all God's will because we serve a God that is sovereign. None of y'all don't have no say so. Religious folk, you don't have no say so. You don't have no power. You think you do. But the power is in the word of God. When people get delivered, it's through God's word. When people get healed, it's through the word of God. When people get set free, it's through the word of God. It's not you. You're nothing but a vessel that is guiding and leading people to something that God already predestined for them. Stop taking credit for God's glory. And I'll close with that. So God bless everyone that's watched today. And I pray that heaven will smile upon God's people. Thank you.